The Crown Colony class were, like the King George V class battleships, examples of ships from a very short period of time. Namely, ships designed in compliance with the short-lived Second London Naval Treaty, which had agreed a six-year holiday on the building of light cruisers between 8,000 and 10,000 tonne displacement. As a result, the Royal Navy took a look at their existing light cruisers, the Town Class, and gave their designers a seemingly simple, but in reality fiendishly difficult task. Get exactly the same capabilities as a Town Class, but on a ship a thousand tonnes less in displacement which incidentally was over 10% of the original town class's total displacement. Compared to the originals, to say nothing of the larger Edinburgh and Belfast, the Crown Colonies were 2 foot narrower, drew 4 foot less in draught, and were 36 foot shorter. The main belt was revised and thinned down to just over 3 inches, the funnels and masts were straightened up, and the classic cruiser stern was snipped off in favour of a transom stern, which mostly counted for the shorter length. They had 72,000 shaft horsepower increased to 80,000 in later ships, which would allow their four screws to get the ships up to 31.5 knots, or 32 knots in the more powerful ships. Due to the rapid advances in technology, the aircraft and catapult system was seen as replaceable by radar, so the whole setup was either jettisoned along with the aviation fuel storage, or never fitted in later ships giving over the hangar and catapult space to more accommodation, and much of the weight savings were then used for new sensors. Two distinct subclasses would emerge, the Fiji group, consisting of, unsurprisingly enough, HMS Fiji, along with Nigeria, Mauritius, Kenya, Trinidad, Jamaica, Gambia and Bermuda, and the Ceylon group, consisting of Ceylon, Uganda and Newfoundland. Two of the major differences between the class were the use of two completely different anti-aircraft control systems, one in each class, and perhaps more visibly, the salons were completed with only three turrets, A and B super firing forward, but only Y turret present aft. On the Fijis, the same four slightly larger than average six inch turrets of the Edinburgh subclass of the towns were retained at the time of completion although some consideration was given early in the design process to trying to fit three quad turrets instead, which had been designed for but not implemented in the Edinburghs. Alternatively, twins in the superfiring position instead of triples were also thought of, um, but in service a number, like the larger towns, would have their X turrets, the aft superfiring unit, removed to free up space and weight for more electronic systems and anti-aircraft guns, much like the salons would be built with. Another option that was also considered and discarded early on was no less than seven twin 5.25-inch turrets, which would have made these ships gigantic versions of the Dido class, as well as the 12 or 9 main 6-inch guns, depending on subclass. The secondary, primarily anti-aircraft, battery consisted of four twin mounts carrying 4-inch guns, and then, depending on the ship and the time period in question, a wide variety of 40mm guns in a mix of single, twin and quad mountings, which also varied between being pom-poms and Bofors cannons. A number of 20mm Orlicans would also find their way aboard during the Second World War. Two triple torpedo launchers completed the overall armament. With construction starting in 1938 and the ships themselves starting to commission in 1940, the class would see extensive service in World War II, with HMS Fiji and HMS Trinidad being lost in the first half of the war, and HMS Jamaica in particular seeing a number of notable actions, including the Battle of the Barents Sea, the Battle of the North Cape, and later on escort duty during Operation Tungsten, the operations against Tirpitz. Post-war, the class was largely kept in service, but modernisations were relatively sparse compared to the older town class, as, despite their being newer and having less miles on the clock, the constraints on the Crown Colony's design meant that there was very little space and displacement left to add new systems. By the 1950s, for example, except when they were on war service, only a turret, the forward lower 6-inch gun turret, was regularly manned, with B and Y turrets unmanned to reduce crew and weight requirements when they weren't under direct threat of engagement. A number of ships would be sold or loaned to other navies during this period, often granting them extended lives past their counterparts in British service. 
as all Royal Navy ships of the class had been scrapped by 1962, whilst Ceylon and Newfoundland, which were sold to Peru as Co- Coronel Bolognese and Almirante Grau, would last in active service until 1982, whilst Nigeria, sold to India as the Mysore, would escape the breakers' yards until 1985. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.